Okay. Here we go. Welcome to our 11th and second to the last class of um, BU 303. Um, I would say I'm excited that we've gotten here. Um, as I said before, you have seen your course outline as posted by Dr. Rifo Omo. All these other topics we are doing, adding to what we've already, um, what we are doing, is the ones I added by myself. Do not waste your time reading them for your exams. They will not come out in your exams. You will not be tested for them. So I wish you a very good luck as you continue with me in this class. We have one last class to go. And that is career opportunities present to people in banking. Um, I've been speaking to a number of my friends to see if they will volunteer to come and talk to you on, as banking students, what you can do in the bank when you become lawyers. That said, let's jump right into today's discussion. Today's discussion should be over in 15 or 20 minutes, so just wrap up. So what are the modern ways we can bypass our traditional banking processes? First of all, what are the traditional banking process? You know that today it is largely difficult to move a large money without using the banks. Um, there is literally no way you can, and not just there is no way, it has become so difficult that if everybody were to be sharing cash from hand to hand, a lot of the transactions we do today will not be possible. For example, um, there are universities or rather institutions of learning like secondary or primary schools where the day they are paid, everybody is called out in a long line and receive envelope. You know, <laughs> today nobody gives envelope. Your salaries are immediately transferred into your accounts. Okay. Even those that don't transfer will give you a check, which is what is usually called a, a paycheck that you go to a bank to cash. Nobody is carrying what, what's of cash anymore and paying staff one by one. Any institution that does that today is a cake. If I were to pay Mr. Andrew right in this call, a sum of money that I'm owing him. I'm not going to go to his house, knock on his door and give him money. I'll tell him, Andrew, send me your account number. Even if his money as, as low as 500 naira, you can transfer it. You know, banks have become so ingrained in our financial culture that it is difficult to do away with them. It's difficult for us to say, ah, we don't need banks anymore. It's difficult for us to imagine ways we can, for example, raise funds, transact uh, in money, or do things that have to do with cash or money without banks. Another reason that has made banks integral to our financial culture is the rise of internet-based um, financial processes. If, for example, the way we um, move money today is all internet based. It simply means that for, for you to be able to move that money, banks have to interact with each other. If you pay a company in China, you are not carrying money and ferrying, ferrying, ferrying to them, right? You pay your bank that will in turn use the processes they will use to pay the person's bank in China. All of this can be done from your comfort of your home. You are sitting in your house. The person in China is sitting in his house. He gets an alert on his phone that you've made a money deposit into his account. And he accepts that as payment. So in many ways, today's topic, bypassing traditional banking systems is at the most basic level banal. Like you can argue that it defeats itself in the sense that what are we going to talk about now? Is it not how to exchange banknotes, which are issued by a central bank, which is a bank? However, as we we'll come to see, there are some forms of money today in the modern world that is not um, 
that is not um, paper money. So many of you that were in the last class that talked about cryptocurrencies, we understand that I'm saying the truth. There are other ways that we pay for things today that do not um, involve using notes produced by a bank. You can decide for yourself what you can collect as exchange. Today, better trades still happen, but in very low key. Somebody can say, give me this that you have, let me give you the other thing that you need. And all of those are transactions that are legal. So let's see. Um, today, if you want to bypass banks, there are three things you must, um, yeah, there are three things you must think about. And in thinking about these things, you must look at how else can we couch the topic we're discussing? One of those ways is to couch it as, what are the ways we can bypass bank-based financing? We're going to discuss what financing means very soon. So bypassing banking means the system of um, having money that we know today through the banks. How can I walk around it and arrive at my person? Now, you must realize two things. There are two people in a transaction. They buy a seller, a client, and the person offering the service. Usually two people. If they can exchange value between themselves without resorting to a bank, then you can say they bypass the banking system. So in order to finance something personally by yourself, there are three main strategies you will use. One of those ways is to pay cash at all times. So if you buy anything, give the person cash. No banks, no intermediaries, you've done what you want to do. No banks, your transaction cannot be traced. So bank do not come in. Usually cash transactions are untraceable, except there is a receipt which someone can use and say, oh, this person paid me this amount of money. There's usually no way to prove that somebody gave you cash. You, you are just with cash, you know? Some countries have begun to make rules that a person who has um, cash, a lot of cash cannot travel. I saw a video where somebody was traveling out of the UK and at the airport, he was forced to declare the amount of money he had with him. He had over 10,000 pounds. They didn't allow him to travel. They seized the money there. I was thinking about it. Is it not an infringement on his right? You know? But those laws exist because states want to try to track the money people make. And the way to make sure your money is on track is carrying cash, burying it in your house, putting it under your bed like saving your money by yourself in your house. When you want to pay for any good, you pay for it in cash, carry it and go home. Another way to bypass bank-based financing, you are going to understand financing later in this call that we're making is that instead of going to banks to borrow money, you borrow money from somebody else that is not a bank, maybe a friend or somebody who knows you, he gives you money. You've not gone to banks to correct money. You've not gone to bank to correct loan. Now, this someone here may also refer to a credit union or a, a cooperative association of people who pull money together. If you go there and borrow money from private people doing their own business, one person to another, there is no need to involve banks. There is no need to involve anyone in that transaction. Another way you can achieve this is by leasing the goods or service you intend to purchase. So instead of paying money for it, instead of borrowing money to pay for it, you lease it. What does lease mean? Lease means to use it and be paying little by little. Or, no, that's not the meaning of lease. Lease means to pay for a small use of that thing. So if you have land, instead of building a structure on the land and making the land permanently yours, you can lease the land seven years. Give me this land, I'll use it for seven years. Then after seven years, I'll return it. That's a way to lease the thing you want. 
If you want to use a car, you want to travel from here to Ibadan, go to your friend that has a car. Please give me your car. He gives you, you use it. You don't buy it, you lease it. You use it when you want to use it and you return it. Those are three main strategies. You know, going direct to the goods you want, getting it from the person and paying him cash, um, borrowing money from somebody other from Danny Bank and paying cash. These are three strategies that you can use credit, facilitate credit transactions without having to involve a bank. Now, why is this important? These are the three main things bank does. Banks exchange goods, pay for transactions, bank lend money. Bank also give you money to buy goods and services. So that's the idea of this lease here. Um, in Islamic banking, as we've learned in the last class, Ijara and all that have a strategy like this. You know, just go straight to what you want, lease it. No need to get a mortgage or get a loan agreement and all that and all that. All those difficult processes. You don't need to do that. So those are the ways you can bypass the banks, right? So beyond these simple ways I've mentioned, what are the ways that people today are bypassing banks? One good way people bypass banks today is by what is called peer-to-peer -peer contributions. Now, what does peer-to-peer -peer contribution mean? When people gather together and decide by themselves to pull money together and decide what they will use that money for, they are doing peer-to-peer -peer contribution. Akawo, for example, is something like that. 11 friends decide, you take money when you finish, I take, when I finish, I give this person. All of us pull money together. So we don't need banks. We are just doing it among ourselves because we trust each other. Of course, this comes with a lot of risks, you know, because somebody can get his own turn and take off. And everybody else is now left hanging dry. Okay, peer-to-peer uh, -peer contribution has an example in the UK, 11 years ago, one dude known as Jonathan Friedland created a website called Zopa. The idea is just to reproduce what we do traditionally here in Nigeria as a susu or a kawo, people who pull money together. In those days, I remember every day you give somebody 100 naira. Every day you give somebody 100 naira. Every day you give somebody 100 naira that will put it in a fund for you. By the end of the month, they return all your hundred nairas to you. You know, when they return that hundred naira to you, you find out that Omo, this money is large. You know, every day contribute hundred naira. Every day contribute hundred naira. You'll be shocked at how much you get. Cryptocurrencies also are a way that people bypass banks today, especially in Nigeria where it is illegal to um, transact in cryptocurrency. That is. You cannot link your crypto transactions with a bank. Are we saying that people are no longer doing crypto transactions? Of course, they are doing crypto transactions. But what are they doing? Instead of using the banks, right, to pay each other, they are just dumping cryptos on one another. So I give you crypto, you give me crypto. We can pay you money in the bank, but that money will not con contain a description or a link to crypto at all. So cryptocurrencies, because of their way, their creation, which is even a way to bypass the banks itself, is unregulated by banks. The kind of inflation and money policies of banks do not affect cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrencies function on independent demand and supply. So when a lot of people are interested in crypto, the price rises. When people start selling in bulk, the price falls. It is not, nobody bails out anybody. It is not a bank-based transaction, especially in Nigeria today. So if I do something for you, you pay me in crypto. What you've done is that you bypass the banks. Two of us agree that we are using this as a legal tender today. Another is a financial cooperative society. 
It resembles the peer-to-peer -peer contribution we talked about. But this is like a credit union where people who work in a place decide to pull money together. For example, there is a cooperative society we have in OAU for lecturers. Lecturers decide for themselves to be pulling money together. The funds they pull together, they use it to perform transactions, right? You can take loan. Why are you, are you able to take loan as a single lecturer from a cooperative society like our university? It's because so many people are pulling money together and they are not collecting their money at the same time. So that money is lumped together like that, that one or two people, or three or four people can take loans without actually shaking the core of the cooperative society. So cooperative societies, peer-to-peer -peer contributions, cryptocurrencies are a way that you disrupt paying for goods and services. I was not able to get more. I think this is the much I can think of. And I really would um, like it. I would like any suggestion on other ways that you know that you can bypass banks today in Nigeria. And not just Nigeria, you can also look outside Nigeria and look at the rest of the world, what people are doing. Because people are rising up against banks due to the fact that when banks fail, government bail banks out. Meanwhile, banks reward themselves, especially their general managers and top staff, generously, in fact, too generously. Banks reward themselves, yet when they fail, government bails them out. There is no that business that government bails out when they fail. If you have a shop in your street and you are going through a tough time, government does not do anything to you. You will fail, fold up. But if banks mismanage themselves, government bail them out. And why do government bail them out? They do not want the ripple effect that will happen when a huge financial institution crumbles. So people are beginning to rebel against traditional means of saving money and dealing in money. Hence, this topic. So there are important things you must note as this course comes to a close for the first semester. One of them is financing. What does financing mean? Um, you must realize that when Fatima was talking, she focused a lot on Islamic financing first before she moved to Islamic bank. So the important thing you need to know about financing is that in order to finance something, what you are basically doing is that you are, you are putting money in that thing. The process of putting money, generating money, is what is known as financing. So there are different ways of financing, right? Different ways. So First of all, your understanding of financing has to flow from the fact that financing provides funds for businesses. So the way you provide funds for a business is what is referred to as financing. The way you make money as a business, how you invest, or everything that has to do with money in a business is referred to as financing. Everything that has to do with money it's referred to as financing. Uh, the way you come terms with money, um, the way you make purchases, the way you invest, because of the central rule of banks, 
banks are fundamental to the finance market. Everything that has to do with investing, moving money, purchasing things, literally leveraging on the time value of money. Uh, sponsoring projects is financing. So banking is part of financing. That is why people who study banking study financing immediately, um, simultaneously rather. We call this course Law of Banking and Negotiable Instruments because financing is usually very technical and is left for those who study economics, okay? There are people who use money because they have a surplus, right? And by having a surplus, they want to make more by investing. There are people who don't even have any money and they need money to invest in their idea. Both the person that has surplus and wants to invest to make more and the person who has only ideas and wants to generate funds so that he can make more money, all of them work together in the finance market. So financing is a process of funding business activities, making purchase and investments. Financing is also divided into two major parts. Right? I'm sure you heard her talk about this, especially um, Fatima. I didn't give this, I should have told you about this before her course, but probably you can, in hindsight, use this knowledge to understand her better. There are two ways of financing something. One is by equity. Another is by debt. Equity and debt. So you can use owing money and all that and finance something. You can use equity now. What does equity mean? Equity is that you are giving people parts of a particular, um, if, if you have a company now, mm -hmm. or you have an idea and you want to open an, a, a company to fund that idea, you have an idea, you want to open a company to fund the idea. There are two ways you can fund your use of that idea. You can exploit your use of the idea. One way you can do this is by giving people shares in, in your company. So you call people say, this thing I'm doing, I want, to, I want you to be an owner in this. So you can take different amounts of shares, ownership portions in this my company. So somebody takes 50%. So how does it take 50%? How much does your idea need to run? If your idea needs 1 million, for example, the person who takes 50% shares in your idea will give you 500,000. You have to source for the rest 500,000. So another person comes and says, okay, I'll take 20%, gives you 200,000. Another person comes and gives you 10%, 100,000. You, you, you originally, originally had 300,000. So you collect all these people's money. It is not that they are having a stake in what you are doing. You are not paying them back. What happens is that when you invest that money and make profit, immediately you declare profit, you must pay them dividend. And what is dividend? The amount on that profit you've made, you have to share it according to the people that brought money and you cannot share it three or four times and stop perpetually. Let's say you start a school with that money, 1 million. The first year you declare profit of let's say 20,000 Naira. That's your first year, you know, profit. The person who owns 50% equity in your business will divide that money into two and take 10,000 Naira profit. The person that brought 20,000, 20%, 200,000, will take his own share, take his own share, you will take your own 30%. Next year, if you declare another profit, they will have it, except they sell their shares. 
except you buy their shares in your listing. And one of the things is that share prices rise. For you to buy their shares, and now they've seen that profit is coming in, they can decide to sell it at a higher rate. That is why people who invest in shares and sell shares and buy other shares, stocks and things of that nature, this is what they are doing. If they buy an ownership stake in Unilever, two or three shares, when shares go up, the value of that product has gone up. Like the value of, let's say companies like Zoom that went to astronomically high over the pandemic. If you want to sell the shares you have in Zoom now, let's say you had, you used 200,000 to buy the original shares in Zoom and Zoom became a multi-billion dollar industry. You know, if you want to sell your shares in a company that is making profit in billions, you can't sell it 200,000 anymore, right? That share you bought for 200,000, you may sell it for as high as 5 million naira. And people will be willing to buy because the company is making profit. So a person who buys the shares of your company that was valued at, let's say 1 million naira, but now is 1 billion and is making steady profit, will make his 5 million back in one year or two. You, you've made your own 5 million, which is again, on top of the 200,000 you bought it originally. So that's how people trade in shares. You sell, you buy, and things of that nature. And that is the advantage of equity financing. When you give people ownership stakes, you don't have to pay them money monthly. They have to wait until you make profit. If you do not make profit, all of you will suffer the loss. You don't have to pay anybody back, even if there is a loss, because they are not creditors, they are investors. They own the business alongside you. You supply the brains, they have the cash. So they themselves who are investors understand that it is difficult to build a business, so they have to be patient with you. The disadvantages are that the companies are not yours entirely. When you fund your businesses through equity-based financing, you don't just wake up and decide what to do, you must consult them. Also, if for example, the people who are your investors have more shares than you in the company, they are your bosses. They have more shares than you, they have more say, because if money lose, if you lose money, they lose more money than you. So whatever you do in the company, you must answer to them. and. At all times, they can decide, okay, we are no longer doing, want to pull out of this company. If they pull out and you don't have any for that person to sell your shares, to um, fund your ideas, what do you do? So that's for equity-based financing. Debt financing is different. Now, we already understand debt as just borrowing money. You know, when you borrow money from somebody, you owe them. That is how many corporations and individuals make large purchases. So what does it mean? You just lend someone money. You have an idea. You call people. Please give me a loan of one million, everybody. They give you a loan of one million naira. You give them a collateral or give them a promise and then you pay them back interest plus the principal. Now, how does this function? If I lend you money now, let's say I lend you 1 million naira, and I say, okay, pay me back in five years, or rather let's use two years. I lent you 1 million, 24 divided, divide 1 million. Let's say you pay me 2,000, 20, Abby? Yes, 2020, or rather let's use it, pay me back in one year. 12 months, you pay me 20, 20,000, 200,000, or rather 100,000 a, a month, right? It may be that my interest is 10%. So every month you pay me interest, that interest upon 1 million, right? That I've given you, 10% interest upon 1 million is 100,000. So each month you give me 10,000 naira. Each month you give me 10,000 naira. 
each month you give me 10,000 Naira. By the end of the one year period, you pay me back the last installment of your interest plus the amount of money you are owing me. One of the benefits, it has benefits, it has disadvantages. If you feel like funding your business idea through debt. Now, one of the disadvantages is that it requires a collateral. So if you need a business, if you want to start a, let's say Uber business, you want to buy a car, that car can be collateral. If you refuse to pay me back my money, I collect the car from you and sell it. Okay. <laughs> also, it's difficult to get loans from small, small people, except the small, small loans you need. And the terms of a loan are usually very difficult. Sometimes the banks use what is called compound interest, which is if you default in paying your this thing, the interest accrues. That is, instead of paying me 10,000, 10, the way the interest accrues is that I gave you 1 million Naira. You want to pay me, let's say 100,000 Naira a month. With a 10% interest, you should pay me 110,000 every month. However, when I pay you the first month, 110,000, the next month, the money I'm paying you back will, call, will accumulate both the interest, original interest, of 10% plus the 10% that have come up for that month. So this second month, I'm no longer paying you 110,000, I'm paying you 120,000. The next month, I'm paying you 130,000. Sometimes a bank, um, a bank loan becomes so much that people are just paying interest without even touching the principal. The principal, the loan itself has become so high that People are paying interest without even touching the principal. Sometimes the interest actually become bigger than the principal. So what are the advantages? If you borrow money from somebody, you are still the boss of your company. You do whatever you want. Another benefit is that once you pay back the loan, the lender has no business with you anymore. The money is yours, all the profit you've made from that loan is yours, right? So if you are paying back the loan well, if you are somebody have, that have accumulated um, an impression that you pay back your loans as at when due, what will happen is that people will know that this person pays back his loan and they will associate you with paying back loans, okay? But what are the disadvantages? Of course, debt can slow down your business. Debt can also cause people to think that many times if you are paying debt, using your debt, all the money you're making to pay debt, it will reduce the viability of your business. And people will not, um, associate you with profit making. So yeah, that's it for today's class. It was short and simple. And I want to thank everyone that's been with us so far. Um, tomorrow, I will expect a presentation on this. Of course, it's going to be short. And um, hopefully by Thursday, we have our final class. Now I'm going to make an announcement, which is that I'm going to take a screenshot of our class on our final class on Friday. So you are required to show your face, at least show your face for the screenshots, because I usually take photos of my students for every semester that's finished. It helps me to thank God for the journey so far. And also I have something I can hang. Now that we've all taught online, I cannot tell you guys to show up in person. You just take a screenshot and that should be it. So tell everybody, if you don't come out on that day, 
you will not be part of the screenshot taking. So bring up your faces on Friday and we'll take the screenshot. So in order to achieve this, I feel like on Friday, our class will be in the afternoon instead of the night. So tell others. Thank you very much. Bye. Of course, the recording will be posted. So yeah, bye-bye.